Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So today we will read from Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 9, Chapter 10, The Pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. And we'll read, first of all, verse 24, but it doesn't have a purport, so we will then read on a few verses. Okay, so this is verse 24. Tato nishkramya lankaya yatu danya sahasrasha Mando Dardiya Samam Tatra Prarudantya Upadravan. Thereafter, all the women whose husbands had fallen in the battle, headed by Mandodari, the wife of Ravana, came out of Lanka, continuously crying. They approached the dead bodies of Ravana and the other Rakshasas. Swan Swan Bandhun Parishvajya Lakshmane Shubir Ardatan Rurudu Sushvaram Dina Gnantya Atmana Atmanam Atmana <clears throat> striking their breasts in affliction because their husbands had been killed by the arrows of Lakshman, the women embraced their respective husbands and cried piteously in voices appealing to everyone. Again, there's no purport, so we'll read on. And this verse now has a short purport, so I will read it, but then we'll also read the following verse. Hahata asma vayam natha loka ravana ravana kam yayach charanam lanka twad vahina parardita This is now... Uh, Mandodari actually speaking, the wife of Ravan. O oh my Lord, O oh Master, you epitomize trouble for others, and therefore you are called Ravana. But now that you've been defeated, we also are defeated, for without you the state of Lanka has been conquered by the enemy. To whom will it go for shelter? Ravana's wife, Mandodari, and the other wives knew very well how cruel a person Ravana was. The very word Ravana means one who causes crying for others. Ravana continuously caused trouble for others, but when his sinful activities culminated, in giving trouble to Sita Devi, he was killed by Lord Ramachandra. So let's read the next verse also. Navaiveda Mahabhaga Bhavam Kama Visham Gata Tejo Nu Bhavam Sitaya Yena Nito Desham Imam. Translation. O oh, greatly fortunate one, you came under the influence of lusty desires, and therefore you could not understand the influence of Mother Sita. Now, because of her curse, 
You have been reduced to this state, having been killed by Lord Ramachandra. <coughs> Purport. Not only was Mother Sita powerful, but any woman who follows in the footsteps of Mother Sita can also become similarly powerful. There are many instances of this in the history of Vedic literature. Whenever we find a description of ideal chaste women, Mother Sita is among them. Mandodari, the wife of Ravana, was also very chaste. Similarly, Draupadi was one of five exalted chaste women. As a man must follow great personalities like Brahma and Narada, a woman must follow the path of such ideal women as Sita, Mandodari, and Draupadi. By staying chaste and faithful to her husband, a woman enriches herself with supernatural power. It is a moral principle that one should not be influenced by lusty desires for another's wife. Matrivat Paradareshu, an intelligent person, must look upon another's wife as being like his mother. This is a moral injunction from Chanakya Shloka. Matrivat paradareshu paradravyasya lostravat atmavat sarvabhuteshu ya pashyati sa pandita. One who considers another wife as another's wife as his mother, another's possessions as a lump of dirt and treats all other living beings as he would himself, is considered to be learned. Thus Ravana was condemned, not only by Lord Ramachandra, but even by his own wife, Mandodari. Because she was a chaste woman, she knew the power of another chaste woman, especially such a wife as Mother Sita Devi. Isn't that interesting and important? Yes. Uh, I'll read the verse again. Navaiveda Mahabhaga Bhavankama Vishangata Tejunu Bhavam Sitaya Yena Nito Dishami Mam. O greatly fortunate one. You came under the influence of lusty desires, and therefore you could not understand the influence of Mother Sita. Now, because of her curse, you have been reduced to this state, having been killed by Lord Ramachandra. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharne Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastya Chadesha Tarne Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunichananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shivasani Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchikapaturibhyas chagripa sindhu bhyevacha padidadam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha vaishnavebhyo namo namaha Well, you know, I chose this uh, series, sequence of verses partly because of this verse because it's so uh, instructive for ladies and so many of our devotees are ladies. Well, at least half, but I think more. Uh, yes, and it's very important. It's very important for all of us to understand what you could say what we should do 
to progress. But it's not just limited to what we should do as opposed to what we should not do. But it's also, uh, well, it's ultimately more what are the effects of doing what we should do or what we should not do. What are the real effects on our lives? What are the implications and means? What are just the results? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to us? if we live in this way or that way, if we maintain this standard or that standard, uh, or even a mixture of standards, then we'll get a mixed result of happiness and distress. So, you know, one first point which is interesting, as Prabhupada mentions, um, there are different descriptions of ideal chaste women. Sita's name is always there. Lakshmi's name is usually there or always there. And sometimes Mandodari's name is there. She was the actual wife of Ravana, although he was just such a well, I don't know, what would you call him, but such a lusty, the word is used here, lusty man. This is always the case with rakshasas. They're very lusty. And in Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna say will happen to you? What will be the result if you become lusty? Huh? You'll fall down, well, yeah. But, but in specific terms, jayato vishayan pumsa sangas teshu bhajayate sangat sanjayate kama kamat sukho. Da? Sukho? Well, maybe you don't understand it well enough. <laughs> kamat means lust. Kamat Krodho. We were just joking. Kamat from lust. Sukho. Vijayate. <laughs> from lust comes happiness. This is what people think. This is what people think in this world. What Krishna said there in that verse is that while contemplating, if you start looking around, hmm. What is this and what is that? And hmm, maybe I could enjoy that. So maybe I should get that. Contemplating the objects of the senses, then one reaches the point of becoming attached to them. Beyond just looking around, oh, that's interesting, that's interesting. Oh, what could I do with that? But then a, a type of decision comes, attachment, I will. I won't just look at it and think that it looks nice and how I could enjoy it, but I will make a decision. I will enjoy it or I'll try to enjoy it. So, yeah, from, so then attachment arises and you actually, uh, become sort of committed to uh, trying to enjoy that and you devise a program for enjoying it. And then, Jayate Vishampam Sasangas Teshu Bajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama. From that attachment, lust comes, which means, in this context, means that when you're a not just looking around and thinking, oh, you know, this looks nice or that looks nice, but you have resolved, I'm going to get it to enjoy. That's the attachment. But then in this context, lust means you actually try to enjoy it, whatever it is. 
It could be a member of the opposite sex. That's very common. It could just be some other thing, just uh, a, a house or some clothes or a motor car particular type. You just decide that to, you really want it and so you get it. And now, now you have, as we said last night, your, well, how do you pronounce it? Versace? It's not right. Versace. 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 So I'm just so uncultured. And it's terrible. I don't know about these things. What, what have I missed out on? I've wasted so much of my life. I, I saw it, I thought it was Versace. Versace then. So now you get your, what did we say last night? Your nice Versace Kurta. <laughs> wow, look. Sure. And now you're enjoying it. <laughs> and you're going off and showing it off at the Sunday program. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Giriraj Maharaj made a joke that na nowadays they put the name of the company that made, you know, the cloth on the uh, pocket or the sleeve or whatever, you know what I mean. So you can show off. But his joke was that the really cool people, the really cool people who are really with it, they don't show off like that. They keep it on the label, which is inside, at the back of the neck, right? So if you want to see, you have to run up behind them, grab the thing, and look at the label. And then you can see, oh, wow, super cool. Anyway, so much for that. Yeah. But we're talking about lust. And in this context, lust, lust means the actual doing it. Not just the thinking that, you know, oh, I really want it. That's more in this context just the attachment. But the lust is uh, that I get it and I try to enjoy it directly, whatever it is. And then kamat. Sukho, that people think. Kamat Sukho Bijayate. It rhymes, doesn't it? You understand what that means? You must understand that. Kamat, from lust, comes, well, the people think Sukh, happiness. But actually, Krishna says, Kamat Krodho, from that lust meaning actually doing whatever it is. The result is not the happiness that the people are hoping for or even they're actually expecting because they think it's a natural process like that. They think it's a natural process like a natural process. You're hungry. You eat something. And then you're not hungry. It's a natural process. That's the way it works. They think it works that we want to enjoy this thing, we get the thing and we enjoy it, and then we become happy. They think that is the sequence. But unfortunately, it is not the sequence. It does not work like that. As Krishna says, kamat krodho vijayate. From lust means actually trying to enjoy whatever the sense object is. 
what actually happens is that anger arises. How, how is that? Why, how could it be? Why, why is it not like, eat like we mentioned, you're hungry, you eat something, your hunger is satisfied. Why is it not like that? Well, the reason is because we are eternal spiritual persons and we are not these bodies. So satisfying or trying to satisfy, give pleasure to the body is not how we as eternal spiritual persons receive happiness. Because we are something different. We are just something different. Uh, so, you know, this is a very important point to, to consider in Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada gave the example of the hand. We've given the example many times before, I'm sure you've heard it. The hand was putting food into the mouth. Keshava. Give your attention. That's okay. The hand was putting food in the mouth. Every day. Every day. However many, two, three times a day. And maybe a snack. At morning tea time. At afternoon tea time, whatever. But the hand was putting food in the mouth. And after a while, the, the hand was thinking, what am I getting out of this? I'm doing all this work, putting the food in the mouth. And, and the mouth is enjoying the sensory, the taste. Oh, how nice. What am I getting? I'm getting nothing. So the hand went on strike. I will no longer put food in the mouth. I will take the food myself directly. So the hand started doing that, trying to somehow squeeze in whatever the food was, the samosa, <laughs> the Mauritian dal puri, Ooh, the gros pois, <laughs> squeezing the gros pois under the fingernails or something. Shushu. <laughs> but the hand, so now the hand is directly enjoying or trying, at least directly experiencing. But the hand found that he was not getting the satisfaction that he expected. In fact, you know, the experience was just not very stimulating at all. But beyond that, uh, the hand found he was getting weak. Because if you don't eat for long enough, then inevitably you start feeling weak. So the hand felt that he was getting weak. You know, it was all the opposite of what he was expecting or hoping for. So then the hand thought, all right, let me put the food back in the mouth. And then after a while, now he's doing that again. Now he's feeling okay. Because the way the hand becomes satisfied and strengthened is not through directly trying to enjoy, but through cooperating and satisfying the body. The, like the whole, then the hand, the part of the whole, becomes satisfied. So, you know, it's a very simple example. You understood that example, right? Yeah. Radha Kripa, did you understand that example? Or were you too busy spinning around? <laughs> anyway, children, they're good children. But they're still children. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, it's a pretty clear example. We are part and parcel of Krishna. He is the whole. We are little parts. And we actually become satisfied 
by serving the whole, Krishna, not by trying to directly get some satisfaction or pleasure ourselves. Simple principle, but if we really try and put it into effect, then we'll see that it's really true. It is so true that if we really give our hearts to Krishna and our minds and our bodies and everything, and we really try to please Krishna, and that becomes our actual desire, our motivation, what we want, then we find the satisfaction and the pleasure is just amazing. It is just amazing. Whereas on the other hand, like Kamat Krodo Bijayate, if we just become engaged again as usual, as before, in the whole process of looking around to see what looks nice, making a decision to enjoy whatever, some part of it all, and then actually trying to enjoy, then it's Kamat Krodo. We become upset. I expected to enjoy, but I didn't enjoy. What's going on? What's wrong? It's God's fault. So, you know, I've also mentioned before about this Kamat Sukho. You, you all know Suk and Duk. Right? Because you all understand Hindi. You understand Hindi? Yes. yes. What does Sukh mean? Good. What does Duke mean? Bad. Oh, something like that. <laughs> Sukh means good. It means happiness, really. Okay? Yes. Hindi lesson. And Duke, it means more like suffering. I had, a, well, I have a godbrother devotee in uh, Cape Town. He married a young woman many, many years ago of Russian extraction. And her family name was, would you believe, you've heard this before, haven't you? Yes. Duke. Because <laughs> in different languages, the same word means different things. Like in Russian, kak, K-A-K, practically the most common word, just means what or how. Kak de la, how you doing? But in Afrikaans, kak means, I cannot say it actually. <laughs> it would be offensive. In Zulu, yebo means yes. In Russian, I, ca I definitely <laughs> cannot say it at all. It's just really as bad as you can get. Anyway, yeah. So his name was, her name, Duke. And her first name, very common Russian woman's name, Tamara. Tamara Duke. <laughs> and I was there when he introduced her to, you know, they're actually Gujaratis, but it's the same in Gujarati language. And, uh, you know, these poor people, right in front of her, he said, this is my wife, Tamara Duke. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you could see they were trying to stop laughing, <laughs> but they, they couldn't. Anyway, such is life. So yes, Kamat Krodho Vijayate. Ha ha, lusty desires. So, so here, uh, Prabhupada's particularly emphasizing about the value, or, or, yeah, the values, the values that women should try to uphold in any list of uh, chaste women, like prominent women, and I don't mean like Indira Gandhi, or Theresa May, or that sort of prominent woman. But historically, 
in Vedic terms, prominent women. Uh, they're all very chaste. Even though sometimes, and particularly in this case, Mandodari, her husband, was not up to the standard. Like we mentioned yesterday, his program was uh, kidnapping, stealing the wives of others if they looked nice. And he, he stole Sita, but he'd already stolen many of them, many. Uh, and Mandodari, who was actually his wife, had to live with this. Yeah, you know, I've seen a few, a few cases where a man has two wives, and the first wife, who didn't really expect to have a co-wife, suddenly finds she's got a co-wife. And it's usually very difficult to accept. Very difficult. And, and usually it doesn't work at all. Anyway, so yes, Mandodari, despite everything, still she was, you could say, rigidly faithful to her highly unqualified husband. So anyway, in general, that sort of chastity, chastity is uh, very not just good, but the effect it has on the woman's, just on the woman, her state of being, is as Prabhupada says here, uh, not only was Mother Sita powerful, but any woman who follows in the footsteps of Mother Sita can also become similarly powerful. She was so powerful that uh, all she did was curse, means speak some words. All she did was speak some words, and Ravana died as a result. That was her power. She didn't have to take up weapons, that sort of power. Just with her words, he died. And a little earlier, in the same chapter, just, I don't know, some several verses, I think, before or anyway, somewhere around here in this chapter, it oh, it's before actually, when Lord Ram and his army are invading, they're actually in the process of attacking Lanka. Then there's a verse, there's one of the verses which says that they basically just slaughtered the army of Ravana just kind of wiped them out. And how was that? Because the master of all those soldiers, Ravana, had offended Sita. So because they were following Ravana, who had offended Sita, they, they themselves, you know, they didn't kidnap her, he did. They were not involved with her. They just had their different duties. But because they were followers of such a person, they all died young. They all died young. Yeah. Um, so this is another example. You know, if you want to read through chapter 10 of the ninth, ninth Canto, it's very interesting, of course. But this is one of the uh, important point that points that comes out. The power of a chaste woman is not in going gymming. Do you use that term? Going to the gym and doing weightlifting? Seriously, I'm not joking. Women do this. They definitely do it. And they become big and strong. Yeah. yeah, they do. And, and some of the ones who do that, they become stronger than your average man in the street, even though he's a man and he may be bi bigger physically, but they become stronger. Did you read? I, I read just recently, I mean, like a, a few weeks ago, a month ago, about an 84 year old woman in America. 84, who was 
doing gymming, like real serious gymming. And she's 84, but she is like muscular. And some young 30 year old or whatever person tried to break into her flat <laughs> while she was there and she smashed him. <laughs> they had photos of him, you know, with blood and black eyes, <laughs> you know, looked like. <laughs> but this is not, this is not really how a woman can become powerful. Uh, chastity and, and that sort of faithfulness and dedication is uh, those types of qualifications uh, the qualifications which give power to women actual power of course there's an interesting important verse and I should have looked up the verse but I don't have my equipment here there's a verse uh, in the Bhagavatam, I think seventh canto, which talks about how a woman, the, the, talking about the qualities of a woman, and the woman, in, re, in regard to the husband, she should understand his mood and try to sort of fit in with his mood, like Deva, Huti, and Kardama. You know, she's royalty, like multi billionaire upbringing. He's living in total poverty under a tree. And so she accepted that way of life and just, you know, what to speak of no makeup and jewelry just matted locks of hair and she accepted that because that was the position of a husband. So generally these verses talking about the qualifications of a woman, they're talking like that faithful, always look after his friends and family members like they are her own, etc. These types of qualities. And, and then it says such should be the activities of a woman whose husband is not fallen. <laughs> so, if the husband is fallen, well, that's a different story. Yeah, it's a different story. But even Mandodari, her husband Ravana, was fallen. You know, what to speak of not following the four regulative principles. He was eating humans. <laughs> you can't get much lower than that, really. But still she was faithful. You know, we have another example, very important example of Lakshmi Devi. Lakshmi Devi, who is often regarded as the ideal chaste wife, but we all know that people are very keen on getting the mercy of Lakshmi Devi. And many men worship Lakshmi Devi, like at Lakshmi Puja time or just any time. In South Africa, I don't know about here so much, but in South Africa, if you're a Hindu, then the, th the first thing you must have is a Lakshmi lamp, they call it, or a God lamp, but it's, it's Lakshmi. A little lamp, you know, oil lamp. Is it the same here? It's called a Lakshmi lamp, first thing. So you get money. But they are trying to worship Lakshmi without Narayan, her husband. And she is the ideal chaste wife. And what to speak of an ideal chaste wife, but just any decent woman is not going to be very happy about other men running around her and trying to get her attention and favor and avoid her husband. Therefore, Lakshmi is called Chanchal, 
or chanchala in Sanskrit means flickering. She has the service of supplying people with money. It's her duty, but she doesn't like doing it. Therefore, to get her attention, you know, to get money, 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 just all the time, it doesn't usually happen. People get something and then she won't give more because they're trying to approach her independent of her husband. Yes, so this is a principle here. Uh, it, by staying chaste and faithful to her husband, a, a woman enriches herself with supernatural power. Otherwise, men, gentlemen, gentlemen, as Prabhupada says here, he quotes um, Chanakya, Matrivat Paradarishu. Any, others, any other man's wife, you must see as mother. And as a general pr principle, whether it's someone's wife or just someone who's not married or whatever, uh, woman, try and see all ladies other than your wife as your mother. And it's very sort of protective for the men if they can cultivate that. Because otherwise the mind, the mind, you all have minds. So you know, you know what can happen. The mind, as Sita says when she's convincing Ram to let her come with him, when he's being told to go into exile but he hasn't gone yet, she says, I have never uh, looked at another man. I have never thought of another man. Well, she asks, what's my disqualification? Why can't I come with you? You're my husband. What have I done? Have I done something wrong? And she says, I've never looked at another man and I've never thought of another man even in dreams, as other women are prone to do, she says. Anyway, it's Kali Yuga. And one thing you must know, in Kali Yuga, it's not easy. How old are you? Kalaj? Set. Set on. Seven. Oui, oui, mon And you're six. You know, if you can, stay seven, because it gets worse <laughs> as the body develops. It gets worse. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. My Lord, it gets worse. That's why the four Kumars, they have, have done that. You know, millions of years, they have been like, Pre, almost preschool or maybe five-year-old, whatever, little boys. And the physical side of it all just hasn't started happening because they know it's such a distraction. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Any comment or question? Comment? Question? Huh? Sorry, yeah. Um, you were live, and then we had actually a sister who um, questioned you. Oh. Hi, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. You mentioned um, Mandoji as an example of chaste wife. Yeah. If the husband is involved in lusty activities, should the wife be chaste? <coughs> They're, uh, they're also an example of the wives of Kal Kalia, who, who were chaste, but, but they prayed to Lord Krishna for forgiving their husband. What is recommended in, the, in a situation where the husband is of demoniac nature? Demoniac. 
Well, lusty is one thing. I mean, lusty is demoniac, but if you really mean demoniac, just like, whoa, violent. Um, yeah, everybody's got a lusty nature, and if anyone tries to tell you they haven't, you must know that not only are they lusty, but they're dishonest. <laughs> but uh, generally, you know, where, where there are problems, just say problems in a marriage, generally we advise to tolerate and try and help correct the person you know, and it can be the wife also, to help correct and not like break the relationship unless the, you know, it's usually would be the husband, although occasionally you get the wife who's physically abusive. Yeah. Unless it becomes, unless there's violence. If there's violence, then, then, you know, basically you're going beyond the point of what you should tolerate. It's a short answer, but that's the essence of it. We, we would generally recommend that if a woman has a husband who is violent, means it's dangerous actually, then, then it's probably better to live separately. Yeah. But, uh, in, but generally, if there's just some problems, some sort of uh, transgression due to the weakness of human nature in Kali Yuga, try to help the person become corrected. Yeah. What do you think of that? What is she, anyway? She can think about that. I was just, uh, well, not just, but a few years ago, I saw on Facebook a devotee disciple of Prabhupada put up a little message there for everyone. He said, my wife just gave me the greatest compliment that she's ever given me. You know, they've been married like th at least 30 years, probably more like 40. He, s he said, my wife told me that actually you're quite a good husband. I wouldn't mind being your wife again in, in my next life. And he said, wow. Is what a compliment. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, in this lifetime I've not been married. Hare Krishna. <laughs> and now I'm too old. Because, yeah. But anyway, 